It is baptismal birthday Tuesday in the studio today. <laughs> Happy bappy birthday, Sarah. Thanks. And uh, you're listening to the coffee hour. I forgot to ask what coffee you're drinking I today know. for it's... your baptismal birthday celebration. Right? Because that's why. Because <laughs> you don't drink coffee any other day. No, right? never, ever, ever. <laughs> or every day of your life. It is Costa Rican. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yesterday I had a special blend from Ethiopia that we got when we were in oh. Omaha. Wow. Our, our awesome Airbnb people got us coffee, and special coffee. We have a special one to try. When are we, we doing do. That? Is that next week or this week? Or? Uh, I'll probably bring it in this week. All right. Very yeah. Cool. Well, <laughs> speaking of baptismal birthdays, uh, I'm going to talk about baptism today. Yeah. And baptismal birthdays. Joining us by phone this morning, Professor Brian Moseman. He's Assistant Professor of Theology at Concordia University, Wisconsin. Professor Moseman, good morning. Thanks for joining us on the Coffee Hour. Good morning. Glad to be here. Are you uh, drinking coffee this morning, too, or sans coffee? I, I am not. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. I'm not having coffee, but uh, I, I did have coffee recently. So <laughs> recently? Recently, within the last week. So. <laughs> do you still feel the caffeine? I That's do, the... <laughs> I do. Professor Mosman, how are things going this summer at Concordia? Are you teaching this summer at Concordia, Wisconsin? Not teaching. I'm working on some research. Oh. Um, so it keeps me busy, but in, enjoying it, so... And it's always good to take a little break and talk even more baptism since it's a daily daily thing and a daily life that we live so indeed and how do you how do you remember your baptism daily oh wonderful <laughs> question all over the place I was thinking of Sarah this morning and all the different things that she could do uh, there's lots of different things to do remembering our baptism I always find it interesting when I talk with students about remembering their baptism Oftentimes when the word remember just evokes a, a recalling to mind an action or an event or something like that. And so if they've been baptized as a child, uh, they try to think back and, well, I can't recall it. So then it just ends up being a blank in their memory. And so when you say, remember your baptism, there's just nothing there. But when the Lord says uh, about remembering our baptism, it's more than just recalling that action or that event, but remembering what the Lord has done. Uh, and the gifts that he's given there, that he's put his name on us, made us his child, washed away our sins, conquered death and hell, and and, uh, given us life and salvation, and what that means for our daily life. Sometimes I even prefer to talk about it as uh, living in our baptism daily as opposed to remembering just for that reason. Nothing wrong with saying remembering. I just find it interesting that sometimes I have to evoke for them more of what that means in terms of remembrance to help them understand what we're getting at. So I would say a wonderful way of, of starting that out uh, is with the very name of God that was put on you, what we call the Trinitarian vocation, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, those are the very words. That God, it's God's name from Matthew 28. He puts his name on you, uh, marked you as his own, calls you his child. Uh, and, and those are wonderful words in which we remember our baptism, whether it's uh, every morning uh, when we say our morning prayers or evening when we lay our head down on the pillow and say our evening prayers or whether we're in our church or chapel, whenever that invocation uh, comes along off our lips, there's, there we are already back in and living in our baptism uh, daily. Uh, along with that, of course, goes our hand uh, with the sign of the cross, which is, if you will, somewhat of a shorthand way or the physical uh, way of, of uh, summarizing those words in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so when you get up in the morning, whether it's the words rolling off your lips first and draw your hand into making the sign of the cross, or whether your hand goes first making the sign of the cross, which draw your lips into speaking those words, a uh, wonderful way of, of remembering your baptism. So you mentioned you had some ideas for me <laughs> to, to, uh, to celebrate my baptismal birthday today. What, what, what are some of those ideas or, or something that somebody else can use to, to commemorate uh, the anniversary of their baptism? Well, a nice one always is oftentimes uh, today the custom is to give uh, the person being baptized a, a baptismal candle. And so you can light that baptismal candle on their baptismal birthday and have a little celebration, whether it's cake or cupcakes or ice cream or whatever you want to eat along with it. <laughs> um, and and if you teach a child as they're growing up, they'll probably even ask you when they're old enough and they say, didn't we just celebrate my birthday? Why are we celebrating again? <coughs> Excuse me. And then you have opportunity to explain to them, well, this is your baptismal birthday. What does that mean? 
a wonderful way about this candle that was lit from the Paschal candle, which indicates the light of Christ in your life uh, and what that means for forgiveness each and every day. Another way to do it would be uh, to sing a baptismal hymn or several or read the scriptures uh, that talk about baptism. you got, of course, Matthew 28, which we call the Great Commission. Uh, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You've got Mark 6.16, which talks about whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And, of course, uh, 1 Peter 3.21, that talks about baptism now saves you. So you read the Word of God, indicating again, teaching us what the Lord has given us in baptism. That's our gift for eternal life. Uh, you get the baptismal hymns that we can sing, uh, which reiterate that and expound upon that. Uh, and, of course, you can uh, confess the Apostles' Creed, which is a summary of the faith into which one is baptized. And, of course, the Lord's Prayer, which draws that out into our daily life of how we live that life as a baptized child of God. Those are all far better ideas than what I had. <laughs> far better. I considered a water gun to, to help you remember. <laughs> but then I realized we're in a studio, so that's a bad idea. That uh, would have been amusing. <laughs> Maybe. Dangerous. Uh, far better. Uh, <laughs> emphasis on the Word and the gifts given in the Word, in, the, in, in baptism. So thanks for yeah. I need to go for that. find my, my candle. It's probably still at my parents' house. Uh, we have we keep all three of ours in the living room on the mantle. That's actually. a really good idea. And, I need uh, to find mine and the candle from our wedding as well. So I do we, have those. We have the <laughs> the uh, we used a we used a Paschal candle for our, <laughs> for our wedding. Uh, that's what it all about Jesus. And so we we keep that and our baptismal candles uh, yeah. in the the living room on hmm. the mantle. Do you know where yours is, Professor Mosman? I do not. <laughs> lost track of it. You, you could get you a new one. one. I'm not yeah. I'm not sure I had one because I have actually I have pictures of me being baptized at my home. Oh. So I don't think there was a baptismal candle. I always laugh because I was baptized in a I grew up on a farm out in the country and there was a little wash basin that my dad would use to wash his hands in when he came in from doing chores outside on the farm. And that's what I was baptized in. I was like, you baptized me in that? <laughs> <laughs> But it's always a reminder of being washed clean, so what a joy. So I don't, because I was baptized at home, uh, I don't think I, I had a baptismal candle. There was never one in the picture, at least I never saw one. So You could still... You could still have, like, you could get I one. Could I could still light one, that's yeah. true. <laughs> because I, I was in the same boat. I was baptized at my grandparents' house, actually. Hmm. Um, and uh, so I don't have a baptismal candle. I have a little plaque from that day uh, to commemorate the occasion. I, I have Wonderful. that in boxes somewhere. But uh, um, but we on my son's baptismal birthday, uh, it seems the last few years we've been camping, but we still bring the <laughs> candle with us. And uh, bring out the candle, and uh, he gets a, a special treat, and we talk about that. And then we also have pictures from his baptism and, and uh, remind him of that and who his baptismal sponsors are and talk about that on that day mm -hmm. as well, reminding him of the gifts that God gives in baptism. But it, as you were talking about trying to remember the day that you mm -hmm. were baptized, do you, do you remember your baptism, Sarah, at all? Like the day that you were baptized? You were pretty little. I was three months. Yeah. So no. <laughs> <laughs> I do have pictures, though. So yeah. I, I think oh, of those pictures. Years ago, they used to have the really ornate, beautifully crafted uh, calligraphy and everything, uh, baptismal certificates mm -hmm. that were quite large. Uh, and with pictures on them of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, or angels, and all kinds of things. And, and then, of course, baptismal symbols indicating and teaching about baptism. And that was your baptismal certificate. All that information was on there. And then it was large, kind of like a poster or a picture, and you would frame it and put mm -hmm. it on the wall. And it was a constant reminder every day as it hung there in your bedroom, every morning when you got up or every evening when you went to bed, again, a reminder of your baptism. Um, nowadays, we don't have, generally, don't have such um, beautifully constructed baptismal uh, certificates, and so people generally don't frame them and put them on the wall. They get tucked away somewhere, and then, obviously get forgotten oftentimes. So yeah. I do encourage people still to uh, frame their baptismal certificate and place it somewhere where they can see it every day. There are places where you can get the, the old style ones too. Mm -hmm. We got mm -hmm. one for our wedding. I need to get one for my 
for my baptism. baptism. Yeah, we have our we have a banner. Our congregation oh, yeah. uh, made a, a little. They're they're small banners. They're like eleven by those seventeen really cool, banner, though. and it's beautiful. And it hangs in our son's room mm-hmm. to remind him of his baptism. And again, one of those things that we use uh, around his baptismal birthday to remind him of that as well. So my my wife's baptismal birthday usually falls uh, on a time when we're on the road traveling for the Christmas holidays. So her baptismal birthday uh, treat is usually a cup of coffee from the <laughs> store. <laughs> hey, sounds like me today. It's a latte. <laughs> it's a reminder of her baptism. Yes. Water, we, we say happy baptismal birthday and, and pray and sing. And yeah, that's, that's about it. Uh, Professor Bozeman, uh, with about 30 seconds left, why is it so important to remember your baptism? Oh, in 30 seconds. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Life and salvation. Uh, this is the baptism is the sacrament that God uses where he gives his gifts to you, forgiveness, life, and salvation. It's how he makes you his child. It's how he brings you into his kingdom. We, In other words, we get forgiveness in a way that we don't get it like that anywhere else. Professor. Uh, and no one can take that away from you. <laughs> Professor Brian Mosman, Concordia University, Wisconsin. Thanks so much for talking about baptism with us today on The Coffee Hour. You're welcome. Glad to be with you. Well, that does it for today for the Coffee Hour. Happy, happy birthday. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> hey, yours is next week, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Eight days? Nine days? It's on the 8th, you're right. Yeah. It's next week. There All you right. go. That does it for the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. <laughs> I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. The listener-supported broadcast ministry of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit kfuo.org or text KFUO to 41444. KFUO, Christ for you, anytime, anywhere.